Man loses his family to an airplane crash, but later on receives a mysterious call from the Amazon jungle. But before we start, please give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to Wonderbot and hit the bell so you'll never miss any uploads from us. Everyone has a different reason to love Christmas. Some love the idea of the holidays, great food, Christmas songs, and Santa Claus, while others love the fact that they'll finally get to reunite with their families. She was just another girl, eagerly waiting to see her father after a long time on Christmas Eve. She was going to take off with her mother and land in Peru, where her dad would be waiting for them. This flight never landed in Peru, though. This is the story of pain, separation, struggle, wilderness, heartbreak, and even worse, destruction. Hans Wilhelm Kepke and Maria Miklitz Radecki, two German students, met at the University of Kiel. They together moved to Peru for further research after completing their graduation. In Peru, they studied birds and wildlife, flora and fauna. Later, they got married. The couple shared similar interests and went on writing several books together. Julianne Margaret Beat Kepke was born to Hans William and Maria Kepke on October 10, 1954 in Lima, Peru. Her father was a zoologist, ornithologist, and herpetologist, while her mother was a known ornithologist who did great research with the neotropical bird species was stationed in Paculpa, Peru. Being their only child, all her wishes were fulfilled. Being born in a family of researchers, Julianne's early childhood days were quite different from normal kids, far from her motherland. Germany, she was raised in Lima. She used to go to research trips with her parents every now and then. Just like her parents, wildlife amused her. She learned so many things about the jungles that no ordinary kid would ever know in school. Julianne was 17 years old, and it had been some months since she spent time with her father. Maria planned on being together with her husband during Christmas, and that's how it all started. A family trying to be together on Christmas seemed like a valid wish. This plan was actually going to meet a drastic end. At first, Maria's plan was to leave for Paculpa a couple days before Christmas, as she didn't want to deal with any last moment to sneak away from the Christmas rush. But her 17-year-old daughter, Julianne, insisted they should stay for her graduation ceremony. Knowing that it was a once-in-a-lifetime moment for her daughter, Maria agreed. They wanted to be in Paculpa, but as it was festive season, most of the flights were booked and they were only left with an option to book a Peruvian airline nobody would like to fly with as their first option. Everyone's concern was right because this airline didn't have a very good reputation due to two recent crashes. Mother and daughter still went on to take the risk. There are some people were ready to take the risk for, and Hans Wilhelm was their family, and they wanted to be together in any way. Little did she know it was going to cost her life. During the festive season and without keeping anything negative on their minds, they pursued the plan. They made the last moment reservations and now they were supposed to take off on December 24, 1971. They were waiting at the Jorge Chavez International Airport for their flight that was running late. Everyone was worried about the fact if they'll be able to make it on time or not, even when the flight was supposed to cover the distance of just an hour. Everyone hurried as the flight was finally able to take off after hours of delay. There were 91 people on the plane, including the crew members and the passengers. The cabin crew attendant made an apology for the delay, and the flight took off. Everything was fine for the next minutes. The sky was clear, but soon it started to turn dark. The flight was on the way, and they were just 35 minutes away from their destination. But this was going to be it. The flight was in the middle of dark, dangerous clouds. Not only the crew, but also the passengers sensed the risk. Not willing to spoil their passengers' holiday plans, who were already anxious, the crew decided to keep going and went straight into even more critical situation, right in the middle of the thunderstorm. The plane was at an altitude of 21,000 feet when the lights suddenly went off and the flight started to shake. Everyone assumed it was just regular turbulence. Unfortunately, this was just the beginning and things turned to worse within a minute when the plane went off the right direction. The overhead lockers opened and all the luggage started to fall on top of passengers. The passengers' half-drank glasses fell on them. The cabin got overloaded with Christmas cakes, flowers, handbags, and presents. The storm became rough and the pilots were losing control. As the situation inside the cockpit went out of hands, the situation in the cabin became horrible, and Maria and Julianne saw a bolt of lightning struck on the aircraft's fuel tanks, and the right wing blew off with the ignited tank. 
The flight that was supposed to land in Pucallpa within some 15 minutes actually took a nosedive. The daughter and mother were in their last moments together. Meanwhile, Hans Wilhelm was waiting for his family to arrive, who will never make it to the airport. He kept on waiting, but the flight never landed at the airport. As time passed, all the other family members and a friend who was there to receive their loved ones at the airport grew anxious. Hans Wilhelm returned home to a decorated living room with a Christmas tree in disbelief about the news that he just received. His 17-year-old daughter and his beloved wife became victims of an airplane crash. To make it worse, it wasn't just the feeling of grief that filled him, but along with it, the feeling of regret tormented him. Yet again, this is where the story ends. The Kepke family shattered in the blink of an eye, and he couldn't do anything about it. He kept on thinking of instead of calling his wife and daughter there, he should have traveled to Lima. The thought didn't let him sleep for days. He wanted to know where they were and what if they were alive. Was someone looking for them? Yes, a search operation started, but covering Amazon jungle seemed impossible due to the weather for the next couple days. Lanza Flight 508 crashed. When this information was passed on to people who were waiting for their beloved ones, everyone's heart sank. The joy of Christmas Eve was suddenly taken over by grief and agony. A plane crash at the height of 21,000 feet means almost no chances for anyone's survival. Planes dodge thunderbolts every now and then, but this was the worst reported case ever. Never in history was such a case reported where a lightning struck with so much power. That's what the airline had to say to save themselves, but neither the people nor the authorities were going to take it as an excuse for 91 lives. People started to protest against the last three recent crashes, and now it was not going to be tolerated. If three flights of the same airlines get crashed, then certainly something was very much wrong with their planes or with their way of operating. A search started to find the crash site, but the area was all covered with dense Amazon forest, which made it difficult to locate. Hans Wilhelm lost his wife and daughter in a moment and stood at the airport all lost with no idea of what he should do next. Who was to be held responsible for it? What went wrong? Nothing was going to change the horrible reality, at least that's what he thought. As an investigation started to know what led to the crash, the authorities found out it was the fault of the airlines. The Electra was not designed to operate in such extreme turbulence. That's why as soon as the lightning struck, the right wing ignited, the fuel tank, and the plane couldn't handle the turbulence. The authorities had evidence of it on the final recordings, and apparently, even after knowing the bad weather ahead, they decided to fly due to the festive pressure on them and to meet the deadlines. So they were held responsible for this crash. And a few weeks later, the Lanza Airlines license to operate was canceled. But this story didn't stop there, as Hans Wilhelm was about to be called too. But for what reason? When the plane was going down, Maria took a deep breath and told her daughter, This is it. Those were the last words she said to her. And the plane started to fall into pieces. Everyone was separately launched into different directions. The seats of the plane were launched in the middle of 10,000 feet, and with it came a silent wave. The pressure of air was so strong that the 17-year-old couldn't even open her eyes. She was falling with no parachute, still attached to her chair. As she opened her eyes, there were the widely spread treetops. As there was a rapid change in altitude, it all turned black and crashing through the trees. She collapsed on the ground along with her seat. After hitting the surface, Julianne was unconscious for more than 24 hours. For someone who fell from 10,000 feet, it seems impossible to wake up again, but Julianne did. She had a broken collarbone and many injuries all over her body. Yet she was awake and was able to walk. It was nothing less than a miracle. The 17-year-old Julianne Kepke just survived a mid-air plane crash. However, she was caught in the middle of the forest and with no supplies. She didn't even have her specs on, and being a short-sighted person, she could barely see. Her clothes were all wet and torn from places. She was in a place known for its snakes and other wild animals. How in the world was she going to make it? For the entire day, she kept searching for her mother. Everywhere she went, she shouted at the loudest pitch, but there was no response. And the biggest issue was that she was without glasses and couldn't see anything that was far away. In a place that's populated with wild animals, how did she even manage to keep walking further? She threw her shoe in the direction she was moving to scare away any snakes or poisonous spiders that she might step on otherwise. Slowly, but this was at least able to walk, even when she wasn't sure of what lay ahead of her. But did she find her mother? After looking around for mother for more than a day, reality hit her hard and forced Julianne to eventually give up. The reality that her mother was maybe no more struck her. 
This prepared her for the fact that she was all by her own out there. This is what trauma does to the functioning of our brains. She had just one thing to do, survive. Julianne was different from regular girls. Her parents took her to the forest many times. During those times when they used to work, Julianne used to get training related to survival techniques. A couple years before this horrible crash, she spent months with her family at a research station that was located 30 miles away from the place where she was wandering then. Julianne wasn't even carrying a pocket knife or a lighter. This meant neither could she build a shelter nor could she send any smoke signals. A knife can be so helpful as she could have cut off palm trees and ate sugar. Sadly, she was wearing a mini skirt and cut sleeves top that made her exposed to all sorts of insects. Four days after walking through the jungle, Julianne came around a part of the plane she was on. It was a row of seats. Passengers that were strapped weren't alive. There was a Christmas cake fallen nearby. Sadly, it was wet and covered in mud, and obviously ants had already accepted it as their food. To save her, there was a bag of lollipops that were still packed. She took it and walked, but how long was this going to keep her alive? Right after she crossed the crash site, she heard the sound of water. She knew that many Peruvian people lived nearby water resources for easy availability of water. But she also knew that all the wild animals head to these spots to quench their thirst. And her guess was right. It was one of her father's lessons that every water body connects to a lake or a river, and these water bodies can lead to human civilization. In hopes to get to a large water body, she was following the sound of water. The time she was supposed to cross the water stream was one of the toughest. After wandering for 10 days in the jungle, Julianne found a boat and instead of stealing someone's boat, she just used some gasoline to disinfect her open wounds. And not long after she thought to continue walking again, she saw a hut. Julianne couldn't walk any further. She decided to wait inside the hut for help to arrive. As she was starving, she tried to catch a few frogs, but they were too slippery for that. Things happened for a reason and this was proof of it. As she wasn't able to see clearly, she didn't notice that the frogs she was trying to catch were actually poison dart frogs. Eleven days after the Christmas Eve, three local Peruvian Indian tree cutters found her sleeping in the hut. As soon as she explained everything in Spanish, the tribals disinfected her wounds. It was more than three hours of journey in their boat to the nearest village. It was an emotional moment when she reunited with her father, who would lost all hopes of her return. With her help, the authorities were able to locate the crash location. She was the lone survivor from the plane crash. But the later discoveries might break your heart. Fourteen other passengers were able to make it alive to the surface after the crash. They died waiting to be rescued. Julianne was not able to live in Peru anymore and left for Germany a few months after the incident, where her father joined her two years later. She wrote an award-winning autobiography released in 2011 named When I Fell from the Sky. She went on to follow her parents' field of studies and became a mammalogist. These days she lives in Munich with her husband and works as a librarian. At the end, we want to know your opinion about the story in the comments box below.